Hello everyone, Louis Hanzo here, and I welcome you back for part four of this What If series. What series is that? Well, if you just clicked on the video without looking at what the series is, it is What If Bardock Went With His Son Goku to Earth. Now, this series has been put on hold, due in part large to, uh, well, to be honest, I kind of forgot. However, here we are, and uh, let's recap, shall we? Now, in the previous entries of this, we had Bardock actually get believed by somebody. And that someone was Gine. She believed Bardock's claims of seeing the future and Frieza wiping out their planet. So... They gathered up a space pod, loaded up a little Kakarot, and were prepared to launch him into space to save his life. However, Gine, she, uh, she fell a certain way. She decided that that little boy is going to need someone to protect him. So, when Bardock's guard was down, she tranked him. Yes, Gine tranked. Bardock. And well, she shipped him off to Earth. Now along the way, Bardock had quite a few visions, including seeing Gohan, seeing Goku vs. Ten Shinhan, all that. But upon arriving on Earth, he was greeted by old Gohan. And from there, we continue our story. Now, just to go ahead and put it in context, Goku, or rather the name Goku, never came about. Why? Well, Bardock was there. He told old Gohan his Saiyan name. So, with the uh, <clears throat> aforementioned events in tow, we go through the previous versions. Now, running through parts 1 through 3, Kakarot ended up on Earth. He went through the Pilaf Saga, the Red Ribbon Army Saga, and events changed because Bardock was there. For one thing, Yamcha is now a competent warrior. Stun gas for the people who uh, are used to me making fun of uh, Yamcha. And that aside, the technology of the Saiyan Pods of the battle armor. Yeah, that's in the hands of Bulma and Capsule Corporation. Will that pay off later down the road? Mm, we'll see. However, in the most recent part, the Red Ribbon Army, well, let's just put it like this. For being an army, they would need a few armies just to survive. But between the two men, Yamcha and Kakarot, they were brought low. Wiped out. And, uh, Mercenary Tao. Yeah, Kakarot just, uh, he, he beat him senseless. There was no grenade. I know this is a slight retcon because I didn't fill in those details too well, but Kakarot just beat him down. Left him for dead. But with that said, we need to, uh, pick back up as it were. The current events. And that is part four. Now that said, let's begin. <clears throat> With everything taken care of, everything that has transpired, one morning, only days after Bardock had used the Dragon Balls, to see if he could bring back his people, but instead only was left with the knowledge that there were other survivors, including his son Raditz. Young Kakarot strode up to him and asked him a question. Uh, father? Sir? Barlock looked at his son. What do you need, Kakarot? Said Bardock, his mouth full of food. Well... I wanted you to... Well... Spit it out! 
Well, would you like to meet my master? Bardock stopped. What do you mean? Are you talking about that Master Roshi? Yeah. Well, I don't think it hurt. Fine, I'll go see him. Kakra was happy. And this goes hand in hand with a poll I had asked you all about. Did you want to see Bardock becoming more involved? And overwhelmingly, you said yes. So let's see what happens. Now... Kakra, overjoyed that father and master were to meet, led Bardock out to Kame House. And there we have our meeting. So, said Bardock, staring down at the old man before him, You are Master Roshi, huh? My son tells me you've been the one training him. Hmm. Roshi nodded at the man. That I have. I take it you are the father he speaks highly of. <laughs> Kakarot tells me you two are not of Earth. Bardock crossed his arms over his chest and replied, Yeah, I'm Kakarot's father, Bardock. We are Saiyans. Our world got destroyed by a genocidal warlord called Frieza. Roshi stared up at Bardock, his eyes narrowing a little bit behind his sunglasses. Bardock explained very tersely how Frieza used his people to conquer worlds and chose to wipe out his on a whim. I have to ask you, Roshi said carefully. What do you intend to do with our world? Are you to conquer us? No. All I want is a life where I can live, train, and fight with my son in peace. As they spoke, someone watched from the window of Kame House. He stared from Kakarot to Bardock and back again. Narrowing his eyes at Bardock's Saiyan tail. Wow, whispered Crown. That guy's Kakarot's dad? He he must be... I mean, he stuttered. No one around to hear him but him. That guy is the only one in the world with besides Kakarot that had a tail. And man, he's just a bigger, scarier Kakarot. I wonder if he's as tough as Kakarot says. This monologue goes unnoticed. As Roshi nods to Bardock, Hmm, I see. Kakarot told me once that you used to have headaches when he was little. Was raising the boy that stressful for you? Bardock glanced down at Kakarot, who ducked his head. No, old Gohan helped me raise and train him. The headaches were caused by something else. Roshi tilted his head inquisitively at the saying. And what is that by chance? I mean, it's hereditary, and please, let me know. That way I can keep a better eye on the boys should they arise in training. It <laughs> never hurts to be prepared. <laughs> Bardock just stared at the old man before giving Kakra a glance. Could those headaches and visions manifest in Kakarot? It seemed impossible, given that Kakarot was born before he gained these visions. But then again, the whole idea of seeing the future, it was pretty impossible by itself. <laughs> the Saiyan looked at Roshi inquisitively. Fine, I'll tell you. But it'll take a while. My boy said that there was another one under your training. If he's still around, have the two spar. Get some training in. Roshi nodded and brought forth a very nervous Krillin, who stared up at Bardock. Uh, hi, I'm Krillin. Bardock just humped at him and... <laughs> Get on with it, train my boy. Krillin was very quick to depart with Kakarot. And as for the two remaining, Roshi just nodded at Bardock and the two went inside Kamehameha. After they entered and sat down, they just stared at each other in silence. And finally, Bardock raised uh, his voice. All right, I want you to listen closely, old man. I only want to tell this story once. Years ago, 
I was sent by Frieza to conquer a planet called Kanasa. Hours later, the two men sat quietly as Roshi drank in and processed the Saiyan's tale. And I do mean story. He stood and walked toward the window. Hmm, this is quite a tale, said Roshi. However, if those visions are as you truly say, and all our future, he turned around and stared Barak in the eye. We must use what you can remember to aid in what is to come. What do you remember, Bardock? Bardock just stared in shock. He didn't expect anyone to agree that he could see the future. Let alone this old man. Or hell, even to utilize it. This was suspicious. He narrowed his eyes on Roshi. What was his game? Normally, said Roshi, taking note of the scrutinizing glare. I would disbelieve such claims as knowing the future, or at least telling you to keep the future a secret from me. What do you mean normally, old man? questioned Bardock. If what you say is true, Bardock, Roshi closed his eyes. Then so many... Lives may be spared beyond suffering. Beyond suffering? <laughs> That's a fancy way of putting it, old man. Roshi held up a hand to silence Bardock. However, by sparing them the known suffering that you have witnessed with your visions, you may unwillingly give them a greater suffering later on the road. On this world, Bardock, we have a saying. And what's that, old man? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. But be that as it may, if we have a means of preventing a calamity, we must use it. <laughs> Though I fear, with your presence and your sons, you may unwillingly bring us that time you spoke of. Barak stared at the old man for a moment before giving him a grim nod. From here on out, things will take a different route. One that he could never see in his visions. After many hours of prepping and planning, the two men stared at a notebook. As the elder of the two spoke. So, this is all you remember of your visions? He stroked his beard as Barak nodded. The ball soon dying. The green demon guy seizing power, and Kakarot fighting his kid. My eldest son Rad showing up, the prince arriving, and then Kakarot fighting that bastard Frieza. Roshi nodded and looked at the notes again. He was quiet, very introspective, and then sighed. If all this proves true... And we might make matters worse. Are you prepared for those consequences, Bardock? Bardock thought on this for a moment. And then replied, If it means taking Frieza out, then hell yes I am. He stood and locked eyes on the setting sun. Those wish orbs can't bring back my people. But at the very least, I could salvage what remains. Roshi nodded at the warrior and said, Then let us prepare. Now, sometime later, Kakarot <clears throat> and Tin Shin Han had themselves their fight at the World Martial Arts Tournament. Now, um, like in canon, Tin Shin Han won. How? When Kakarot is stronger than he was in the canon? Well, that strength went to his head. He got cocky. He felt he had this in the bag. Well, it doesn't matter if you have it in the bag or not. You have to hold on to that bag. Now, with that said, the group was in full celebration mode, but in keeping with the cannon, Krillin ran back to get the Dragon Ball for Goku. However, Ah, there it is! Krillin picked up the Dragon Ball and smiled, oblivious to the danger looming behind him. 
person behind him smirked, looking at the bald, diminutive fighter. So careless, so weak looking, perfect kill. <clears throat> and he raised his hand. This creature that we would know in canon as Tambourine angled his fingers. The sharp nails lined up with the poor fighter's throat and struck. <laughs> However, as his hand was a mere inch from Krillin, his body goes stiff and he slumps to the ground dead. Hmm, <laughs> said Bark, wiping blood from his arm. So this is the threat that was supposed to kill him? Pathetic! Krillin turned at Bardock's statement to see Tambourine lying dead with a hole in his chest the size of Bardock's arm. Moreover, Bardock himself was wiping the evidence of the murder from his arm, as casually as you were to wipe the sweat from a workout. The longer Krillin stared, the more Kakarot's words had echoed in his head. We're not humans. We're Saiyans. What is that thing? stammered Krillin in fear. Where did it come from? How did you just kill it? Bardock just stared at this noisy brat and sighed. Ugh, that thing is a monster. I don't know where it came from. Who knows? And yeah, I killed it so you didn't die. You should be grateful for your life, whelp. Krillin flinched at the words, and Bardock just kicked Tambourine's body aside and dragged Krillin with him. There was a celebration to enjoy, good food to be had, and with the next day, there would be more trouble to deal with. But for now, celebration. But as they were about to enter the restaurant, Bardock glanced at Krillin. When you enter, say nothing to Kakarot. Say nothing to anyone. Rushi already knows. What? How? He knows. Now leave it be and be grateful for the life you have. Days later, as Bardock was destroying boulders for training, gotta keep yourself, you know, in form. Kakarot ran up to him. Father, said a curious Kakarot, why are you sending me off to train at Korn's Tower again? <sighs> Simple boy said Bardock, punching another boulder into dust. A powerful foe awaits you there, and I must prepare for another one. Kakarot was confused. Wait, there's someone out there that his dad had to get ready for? Bardock was invincible to him. A monolithic man who could never even flinch in the face of even the biggest threat. Nothing could touch him. Even when he trained against his father, no matter how hard he struck, Bardock just stared, unfazed. And the more that Kakarot thought about it, the more excited he got. Oh boy, I can't wait! Now, sometimes later, at the Korn's Tower training grounds, or I guess you could just say the tower grounds, you know, right where the tower starts. Bardock sat on the stump and watched from the distance observing as the son encountered a man. A well-known man. A large man of great renown. He had large hair, carried a sword, and would later become known as the Bean Daddy. Yes, I, I know. Team Four Star joke. I, I had to get it in there. Anyway, this man is Yajirobe. And why didn't Bardock interact with Yajirobe? Well, it's a simple answer, really. He was lying in wait for whatever was to come. And what came? A bizarre dragon-like creature. Now, we would know this creature better as Symbol. And unfortunately for the Dragon Ball-seeking dragon creature, his life was cut short faster than in the canon. Why? A full health 
stronger Kakarot joining in on this. And as the poor creature lay destroyed, laying in a heap, the two men standing over him, the one thing that came to their minds was, how do we cook this? What? To Yajirobe in particular, and to any saying, well, this is a weird creature that uh, we just destroyed. Let's eat it. And if you don't believe me, go watch uh, some Dragon Ball Z, some uh, stuff before Vegeta even hit Earth. Yes, I'm talking about the episode that we saw Arlia about. I believe that was the case. Might be a little lapse on my memory there. However, the new challenger has appeared. The one Bardock was waiting for. So, this is who killed my son. Said a voice. I do not know if I need to be impressed at your skill and prowess. Or be saddened that my spawn was such a weakling. Kakara and Yajirobe turned and stared up to see a being floating in the air. He was garbed in robes and possessed an elderly visage. His flesh... A withered green. This was the one we would come to know as Demon King Piccolo. And he had a bone to pick. He stared down at the two who had just slain his child. And then his eyes traveled around. Who had killed him? Well... It was quite simple, really, and the Demon King just let it go that Symbol had been killed by Kakarot and Yajirobe. But then he spotted someone who walked forward into his line of sight. And that something was Bardock. And there was just something about him that just unnerved Piccolo. Something cold. Something dangerous. But that would wait because the young boy, Kakarot, had something to say to this newcomer. Hey you! Yelled the boy. Are you that guy who sent him after my Dragon Ball? King Piccolo just kind of blinked and said, I did send him out. And I see that he too was killed. Are you the one who slew my other child, Tambourine? Who? Oh, I don't know anyone like that. King Piccolo was confused. If this was not the one who killed Tambourine, then he moved his eyes toward Bardock. Aha. Very well. I still need that Dragon Ball you have. If you refuse to give it to me, then I will take it by force. Well, what happens next is kind of what you know in canon. Kakarot and King Piccolo duke it out. And with a stronger Kakarot, King Piccolo almost loses, but narrowly, he just barely, just narrowly wins this one out. And as Kakarot is laid out on the ground, barely hanging in there, and unable to continue fighting... King Piccolo smirked. He managed to win, but he was also smart enough to understand if he left this boy alone, he could come back and kill him. So he held up a finger, ready to blast him. And that's when Bardock walked over. Now you gotta wonder, why didn't he step into this fight sooner and Stop Kakarot from getting his butt kicked. Well, it's a pretty simple answer, really. It's how Saiyans are. You see two Saiyans fighting or a Saiyan fighting something? Let him go. It's his fight. It's his glory. Don't steal it from him. However, Bardock, his eyes never leaving the would-be Demon King, knelt down and scooped Kakarot up in his arms. All right, come here. You fall well, my son. But rest. It's time for me to put what your master and I planned into effect. 
planned? <laughs> you act as if all of this was your idea. That you set this up to bring out my arrival. Barlock handed Kakarot the Adrobi. You, buffoon! Climb that tower and take Kakarot to Corrin. Now! Yajirobe opened his mouth in protest, but Barlock silenced him with a simple, Now! And, um, when Barlock tells you twice to do something, you don't stand around and wait for a third time. As Yajirobe quickly grabbed Kakarot and began scaling Corrin's tower. Leaving the Demon King to amuse himself at the thought of this buffoon just existing as a simple toady. But, the Demon King had better things to focus his mind on. Bigger fish to fry. And as Yajirobe disappeared with Kakarot, Bark walked forward, sizing up the Demon King. King Piccolo stared. His only thought was, what is to come? There's something about him I don't like. And Bardock, he just smirked. Seeing King Piccolo in his vision was one thing, but in person, <laughs> he was just disappointed. That smug look disgusts me, said the Demon King. I will delight in removing it from you. Remove it then, said Bardock with a smirk. I only let my son fight you so he could understand I'm the, the only one out there who's stronger than him. Hmm. <laughs> Show me what you've got then, fool. And what happens next is a beating so savage that were I to detail it in full details written here, well, uh, this video couldn't stay on YouTube. So, I will summarize it. What followed was literally Bardock just beating King Piccolo senseless. And at one point, picking up a tree in each hand, digging his hand deep into the wood to hold on to him, and just clubbing the Demon King senseless. This proud, would-be dictator was left... Writhing on the ground, crying as a wounded animal. Satisfied with the severe beating he had doled out, Barlock tossed his improvised weapons aside and stared coldly at the Demon King. And Piccolo? Oh, every bit of his hate and malice directed straight at the unscathed warrior slowly walking toward him. But with each step, that hate became fear as he realized he was far out of his league. And each heavy footfall marked a second close to his death. <sighs> Oh, stay away from me, said King Piccolo in fear, slowly backing away on the ground. You monster, stay away from me. Huh, said Bardock coldly. Monster? Ain't that hypocritical coming from a guy who calls himself a demon king? Why don't you tell me then how many people in this world felt your hate, your evil? Tell me how they felt when you terrorized this world of your ilk. And lie me to that feeling when all the resistance was crushed, save for a few meager humans. More so, Barlack slammed his boot down hard onto the fallen would-be king's chest. Tell me if you remember a man named Mutaito. Mutaito? That human that sealed me? Ah, oh, good. You have a brain. Barlock chuckled grimly. <laughs> now, let me give you some advice, fool. If you're planning to wipe out people, you leave no survivors. And now, a parting message from the student of the man who sealed you away. Goodbye.
and a key blast began charging in his path. And as the Demon King stared up at this point of light that slowly grew, he knew it was over. He would die. However, a voice cut in. I would ask that you not kill him if you could. Bardock stopped, the key receding back into him. As he turned his head to the voice, pressing his boot harder into Piccolo's chest to keep him pinned. Ah, shut up! He turned his eyes to see another man looking just like King Piccolo, but this one was different. He walked with a staff, and he carried himself differently. If King Piccolo were a monster, this man carried himself as a saint. But his eyes narrowed at the interloper. Was this man a new foe? I ask you again not to slay him, Bardock, said the elderly interloper. Please, stay your hand. I am called Kami. I am the guardian of this earth. And the fiend you have pinned below your boot is, regrettably speaking, my other half in the most literal sense. If you end his life, you slay him. Then I and the Dragobos disappear with him. Bardock froze at these words. If this wannabe dictator died, the wish orbs vanished? This seemed very suspicious, especially coming from a being that looked like the one under his boot. Bardock mulled this over for a moment. And tell me something, Kami. What guarantee do I have that you aren't with him? That you ain't just gonna stab me in the back the moment I take my boot off him. Honestly, you really have no reason to believe me. But tell me something. Why would I ask you to not let the wish orbs be destroyed, aside from possibly granting him a chance of freedom? Bardock thought for a moment, and then glared at the fallen demon king. He thought about the wish orbs. They were a powerful tool, one that could be used for good or evil. And while the orbs had let him know that his people were still out there in the stars, in the hands of someone like King Piccolo, Bardock looked over again. So, I want to make something clear. If I take my boot off him and spare his life, what happens? Kami stared. Not sure what to say next, but the time for eloquence was gone, to say it bluntly. So Kami said it straight. Honestly, you have no reason to believe me, even less to accept my words. But I swear to you now, on my right, on my title as guardian of this earth, that I am not with him. Should you spare his life, I will seal him away so he troubles you no longer. Bardock just thought about it for a moment. Was this really worth staying his hand? <sighs> Tell you what. Kami stared at him, listening intently. I'll spare his life, but if he's not sealed away immediately, your life's next. And Kami just stared, sweating profusely in fear, as Bardock removed his boot. And as King Piccolo gasped for air, those gasps for air became screams of agony. Why? Well, Bardock is, if anything, a bit vindictive at times. 
So he blew off Demon King Piccolo's arms, disarming him in the most literal sense. Kami walked forward, giving Bardock plenty of space. Understandably. I knew of your visions of what is to come, and your plans with Mutin Roshi. Those wishing orbs, I recommend you keep them intact to allow for those who fall to be revived. Even with your knowledge, not everyone can be saved. Bardock just grunted and stepped aside. King Piccolo, realizing it was all over, began scooting back, using his legs to try to get away. He just needed enough time to regenerate his arms, and maybe he could fight back. Something! But, Bardock just stared at him. And it was game over. King Piccolo knew there was no saving himself. It is time, said Kami, pulling a ball from his robes. For you to be sealed away, my other half. He put the bottle down, uncorking it. Mafuba! Hours later, at the base of Korn's tower, young Kakarot races down the tower and lands, ready to fight, ready to take on King Piccolo, but was met with the most confusing sight the young boy could possibly imagine. A creature, a man, looking just like King Piccolo, was standing and talking amicably with his father, even shaking hands. He didn't know what to do with this. Why? How? This other man just smiled gently at Kakarot, nodding, and then flew up into the clouds. Kakarot ran to his father. Father, why did you spare him? Isn't he our enemy? Bark just crossed his arms and shook his head. <sighs> He's not the one we fought. Call him the good twin. In time, you might even train under him. For now, I gotta talk to Roshi. Let's go, boy! And thus, the two Saiyans flew away from the tower in search of Roshi. A few days later, Bardock stared at Roshi as Kakarot and Krillin sparred outside Kame House. The two men sitting in silence as Bardock's tail was absorbed by Roshi. And I do mean the story. Roshi finally looked up and said... So, the monster is locked away again. That being called Kami, I remember hearing of such a person from Korin years ago when I trained there. I think he's still around. Bardock nodded. Yeah, he put the demon in a bottle. Told me he'd seal him away forever. Roshi just looked out the window and smiled. Well, at least one trouble has been taken care of. Sir Bardock, we have time to prepare for the next one, yeah? Bardock just walked to the door and smirked at Roshi, nodding his head. Until then, old man, I'll be late Kakarot train with you and whoever else. We'll be in touch. And with that, Bardock took Kakarot with him and flew away from Mount Pazu. Now, years passed. And the fight that would normally happen, where after many events in Chi-Chi um, confessing to Goku, I'm sorry, Kakarot, and leaving Bardock to, uh, I we should say, muse over the woman. Well, I'll be damned. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say she was a Saiyan. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Gine when she was mad. Boy picked well. However, the final boss of this tournament, well, turns out it wasn't uh, Piccolo Jr. But Kami himself, in his disguise as Hero. It was a good fight, an easygoing one where Kakarot could just spar. And the fight ends with young Kakarot taking victory and Kami raising his hand to show the victor. Bardock and Roshi, along with old Gohan, all just stood there, smiling, proud of young Kakarot. 
Well, the years passed, and Kakarot and Chi Chi married. Little Gohan has been born. And, uh, Bardock got to taste something that not many Saiyans ever do. He became a grandfather. And that said, things should end there. But, in a field somewhere, light streaks across the morning sky. This isn't some shooting star, but a visitor from the stars. It streaks across the sky and plummets into a field where a farmer was a shotgun. And laying in his field was a pod. And as the pod opened, and a man steps out, he adjusts a scatter on his face and smiles. Well, time for a family reunion, Kakarot. And with that, we end our tale. So, everyone, if you enjoyed this What If content, then please leave a like. Comment down below what you'd like to see next. And if you have yet to, I implore you to subscribe. And if you have anything you want to say on what should come next, then please let me know in the comment section. I will happily take on board your thoughts and criticisms and uh, bring forth to you a very compelling tale. And uh, I know that you're probably wondering why Bardock still has his Dragon Ball Minus and uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly attire here. Well, I could not readily find any art that uh, depicted him not armored up. So that being said, if anyone uh, wants to show me their art, I will happily feature here in the next What If. But... This has been an interesting and, albeit, brief run with King Piccolo Saga. And, uh, in a way, you gotta feel a little sorry for King Piccolo. He came thinking he was gonna be king, but uh, ended up becoming nothing more than a mook. And as for Kakarot, well, hopefully with Bardock around, Chi-Chi uh, will be a little bit more agreeable about the training of Gohan. But we'll see in all due time. With that said, everyone, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya!